Well, good Saturday afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blues Sports Report without you guys, as well as you ladies. You know that this literally does not work. All right, so by now you've heard the latest, of course, with Odell Beckham Jr., that Odell at soonest, at soonest, won't be really, really ready to get on the field until basically playoffs at the very soonest. And that doesn't bode well for what the Cowboys were looking for. They were looking for an opportunity to make that deep run and thinking that he would be the guy that could help him get there. Um, unfortunately, there is structural concerns and rehab that still needs to be done for Odell. It's not sounding like it's going to happen anytime soon, although we've had the Bills GM who believes that he can be a contributor in the playoffs. We have Odell Beckham Jr. that's saying that he knows he could be a contributor come playoff time. But the reality is we've got five games to get ready for playoffs. And you're now talking about a guy who you could sign him. You could sign him and say, okay, if we get anything, then that's more than what we have. Somebody who probably is feeling good right now would be James Washington, the unicorn. James Washington, who I've talked about a couple of times, you know, James Washington, who broke his or fractured his fifth metatarsal in training camp and has not been able to get on the field. I call him the unicorn, of course, because we always talk about him, but we rarely see him. Well, Fortunately, he's actually had a couple of weeks where he's actually been in pretty good shape. They said they could have opened the practice window for him uh, a few weeks ago, but the thing was we were playing three games in 12 days, and there wasn't going to be a lot of practices. So they decided we're going to wait before we open up the practice window for him so that way um, they'd have more practices. Although, at this point, the Cowboys getting back on the field tomorrow where um, – you have uh, Tyron Smith who will be beginning to practice as well. They're not going to be padded practices, and they're shorter because their idea is we want to keep the players fresher for the games, which is totally still, to me, crazy. Um, talking to my, my buddy Lincoln Coleman, who literally was saying, we hit full pads the week of the Super Bowl against Buffalo. Yeah. Kinder, gentler NFL. So James Washington, who's been forgotten because of all the talk of Odell coming, and you could say, well, if Odell comes, then maybe you end up cutting James Washington since he hasn't been on the field. But here's what we have with James Washington. James Washington, who is still relatively young, we'll see what we're going to see, has an opportunity to stake his claim, to stake his claim, and probably is breathing a sigh of relief saying, I've got an opportunity to do something here before Odell gets signed. I don't know if Odell gets signed tomorrow by the Cowboys with an incentive-laden contract or if they're going to play wait and see because, you know, he's not ready. But here's what we do know with James Washington. 2018, he played in 14 games for the Steelers. 16 receptions, 217 yards, 13.6 yards per reception. Um, in 2019... This was actually his big year. 44 receptions, 735 yards, 16.7 yards per completion. The reason why I bring up this year right there is the thing that's interesting, as much as you, people will talk about Dak Prescott, he sucks, he stinks, and everything else, players with Dak Prescott have their longest per completion with Dak Prescott. Mari Cooper, boom. Uh, Des Bryant, boom. Bryce Butler, I think it was Bryce Butler, and uh guy from Jacksonville broke his foot. Um, all these players, uh, Randall Cobb, who played with Deshaun Watson, as well as Aaron Rodgers, had his yards, longest yards per completion with Dak Prescott. If this holds true, then maybe, just maybe, James Washington can be a deep threat for us. Because, again, 13.6 his rookie year, 16.7 his second year, 13.1 
with uh, the Steelers in 2020. And I don't know if you can really count 2021. One, he was in the doghouse. Um, and we're talking about Big Ben's last year, who Big Ben looked about as old as you can be playing quarterback. I don't know that Big Ben could have completions down the field um, very much anymore at this point in his career. That last year, he averaged 11.9. So in his career, receiving-wise, he's averaged 14.3 for those four years. And that's what we were kind of looking for here with the Cowboys is we need somebody who can stretch the field. And this is an opportunity to go ahead and work with Dak Prescott in the offense and hopefully get a few tune-up games where we're playing the Texans, the Jags, and some of these other teams to get comfortable. And maybe he can end up being more productive than what we would be getting with Odell basically on one leg. Now here's, I'm going to pivot a little bit here because it's almost comical because I don't know what one has to do to impress any of the outsiders out there. And I, maybe I should call it the, the shady shade report because shady McCoy is always throwing shade on the Dallas Cowboys and um, especially Dak Prescott. The Cowboys scored 33 points in one quarter. The Eagles, who they say had the most impressive win over the weekend, I believe they scored 37 all game against the Titans. Against the Titans. I know, I understand. You know, you look at the record with the Titans and you say, well, man, that's a great team. Um, but you start thinking about their victories. Two against the Colts, uh, against the Jaguars, against the Raiders, um, against the Commanders with Carson Wentz. Then you start saying, hmm, maybe those victories aren't quite as impressive as you thought. There's no winning team that they've beaten. And I'm not saying that the Eagles aren't playing great because they are. They, I think it's all going to come down to Cowboys versus Eagles. I think that's what it's going to come down to. But let's listen to Shady McCoy because this is the Village Idiot Speaks. I think that's what I call it. The Shady McCoy Village Idiot Speak. Let, let's listen in to this a little bit. Cowboys, it told me this. Number one, I will reiterate, I don't think the Cowboys need Odell Beckham. I'm just going to stick to that. If you can put 54 points on a team, regardless of the team, I don't know why you think you need help. Number two, not only did the Cowboys put up 54 this week, they put up 49 three weeks ago. Keep in mind, America. And 40 the against the Vikings. The most points scored in a game and the second most points scored in a game, and they've done that within the last four weeks. Not only that, it's not just that they beat the Colts, it's how they beat the Colts. Dominant fashion, forcing turnovers, scoring on offense, a good enough run game, and a enough passing game I think the Dallas Cowboys are everything they hoped they would be and could be for that reason this win means a whole lot to me but LaShawn McCoy you played several games against the Cowboys you know the Cowboys well. here we go he knows that. Look at him. <laughs> what yeah, up? Yeah. I remember him too was yeah. the Cowboys win something or nothing big dog it's funny you talk about the Cowboys looking good in that green my dog eagle green that is no <clears throat> so when I watch the Cowboys blue no. Oh, oh, oh. That's like Cowboys blue. What blue is you see the blue and the dark in it? What and the blue black? is it? Nah, come on, Cowboys wear like three types of blue, so they're so, not telling. Something or nothing. <laughs> so, the, so the question that you asked. Yes, sir. The real question that is, what did I learn from this game? No. Nothing. This, this, this win didn't mean nothing to me. Struggling team. Coach, they just hired off the set. Eagles wanted me to come play or be the head coach. I'll come do it. He did the same thing. I mean, that is, it, it didn't show me nothing. Your home game, you should win that game. Um, but one thing it did show me, though, I will say this, is that CeeDee Lamb, he's the number one. Okay. A lot of questions, I, I think he really is. Turning five-yard passes to 20-yard touchdowns, <laughs> right? Making a, a, a game-managing quarterback look pretty good. Yeah, that's all I got to learn. Oh, and the last thing is that they hype in the game up for Christmas Eve when them boys see my green boys in green. Eagles, Cowboys, yeah. Christmas Eve. We will get there yeah. eventually. Because you always know that's going to go, right, Dave? You wake up early in the bang, morning bang. to hate this hard. I, <laughs> I keep it real. Does it take extra effort? Come on, man. I wake up like this. This is the indie team that just pushed the Eagles to the very brink. 17-16 <laughs> against that coach yeah, who's lost. never done this before. Lost. 17, 16, one point. Something or nothing, Dave, where you at? It's absolutely something, and here's the funny thing. It's something because the Cowboys didn't even play that well. This game was 21-19 to 19 Dallas with 3.53 to play in the third quarter. 
was kind of up and down. Mm -hmm. Dak Prescott had a turnover. The defense was struggling a little bit with mm -hmm. Jonathan Taylor. Colts were using quick game and screens to take advantage of their aggressiveness. Yeah. Sitting there thinking like, this is what I thought might happen. The Cowboys <laughs> might have a letdown on national TV. And then I blinked and they had scored 33 points in the fourth quarter. Literally. Have you ever seen that happen in the NFL? This isn't college. This isn't Bama where the five stars are like, ooh, let me, ooh, all right, let me, let me loosen up. We're, we're not playing very well. That's fine. That happens stars. against Panera State, like Joey likes to say. This is the Panera NFL State. the Cowboys were like, nope, we're, we're done. We're scoring 33 points. It's 54 to 19 in the blink of an eye. Touchdown. Fumble recovery for a touchdown. Another interception. Take that in for a touchdown. Take the next one in for a touchdown. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like it. And I don't want to get carried away. I don't think the Colts are that good of a team. You shouldn't be able to do that to an NFL team. You just shouldn't. So, yes, for them to play a decent game and win 54-19, to 19, it says that they are on a very short list of contenders. We'll get back to that list of contenders shortly. But, Joy, I want to hear from you. Something or nothing that win. I mean, I, I've heard that the Colts were well coached. It was like storybook ending after one game – one and that's a, yep. that should be a really great win for the Cowboys, mm -hmm. according to all that. All right, let's be serious and stop being petty for a second. They're a talented team that is not having a good season and they are not well coached. That's the Colts, right? Regardless, they still play hard. They still have Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. The they've, still, they've still pushed teams and still have wins this season. You should not be able to do that to an NFL team, like Dave just said. That mm -hmm. was staggering. Now, I don't want to get carried away. I am, I am. Don't get carried away. I'm sober from Cowboys juice for quite some time now. I feel good. Body's oh, Joy. loose. Joy, I got you it. You know, I got, right here, no, I got the bags on under my eyes. I'm feeling good. So I'm going to fight the urge. But I have to say mm -hmm. something nice about the Cowboys. Yeah. I still feel like I'm going to be convinced about the Cowboys in the postseason. But that is just a lot of points. That's crazy. In one, like, in one quarter. In the game. That's crazy, Shady. That's a lot of points. Uh, is it crazy? And they did that while it's, not playing you know well. What it is, though? It's not that crazy because that team gave them all that. He they gave them all. Close game. But right? don't you don't you gotta go take it? Like all no. oh, the take away. Because you, 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 you think they take the ball away from them. Then how come the Colts did it to you guys, man? Down on the screen. First down, they fumbled it. But he, oh, oh, and he, return, he returns it. Next drive, they throw him up. An easy pick. True. It's like. They gave him that game. Let's, let's not like it was a you, hard. You know, you know Matt Ryan. I they believe making twenty-eight million dollars this year. Many say he's a fringe Hall of Fame player. I believe Look he's a former NFL MVP. <laughs> he's not just sorry. Cowboys got to go take that. They went and took that ball. You think that for the two picks that the, that the America did see, one was behind him. <laughs> the other one he just floated. Like if the Cowboys wearing this and really just dominated him, I would give him that. But that's not domination. They gave him that though. And then real quick. When you, when you get a fumble recovery for a touchdown, right? Then what is he smoking? Because you get the ball on the 20 yep. or 25. Then you throw a pick you on the other side. At the worst, you don't get a field goal. But if that's not domination 2-5, what is, big dog? You got to be objective, oh, man. I'm just what being, is? You know, the problem is people want to read stats. And, oh, this is what it is. No, let's just really watch that. Like, if I'm really watching that game, they really just gave him that game. Cowboys are going to just take it. They gave it to him. I've watched a lot of NFL football games and – Five takeaway performances by an NFL defense don't come around very often. Yeah. You take it from the other team five different come times. Come on now. You never play it real quick. In the league. Now, the league is hard. Yeah. I, I get it. You in there play a team, they don't want to play no more. I've that's seen teams true. quit. That's true. Quit. Like, they don't want to play. I do think the Colts quit. Michael Parsons tweeted about it. He literally oh. tweeted and said, like, we made them boys stop playing. I, I have seen that before, When man. you go from being down by two... Mm -hmm. like, oh, we're in this against the Cowboys. We got it. And then you literally blink and it's 35 to 19. What are you supposed to do? I'd probably quit too. Yeah. That's how Been quickly there. they went from. Because they had no hope. Very well to we are beating your ass. But I don't think I've ever seen a <laughs> switch like that. Mm -hmm. but, but what is impressive about it to me is that the, the Cowboys defense has that capability. Like they yeah. can do that. I don't mm -hmm. think the offense played that well. I don't think Dak was really that inspiring yesterday. But if your defense is Wasn't that, it? but if your defense is that good, okay, like you could be anybody. That's even if the okay. Let's be clear here. I did not say that Dak Prescott played a great game because we didn't. I looked at that and said we didn't really get great separation with the wide receivers. I saw Dalton Schultz dropping some passes. I saw. The Colts able to run the ball a bit in there. I'm not saying that the Cowboys played a great game. However, 
That should be scary. That should be scary. And you look at it and say, they played a bad game, but they won 54-19. And they erupted for 33 points in a game. I want you to understand something here. Let me explain to you right now. The Kansas City Chiefs with Pat Mahomes is averaging 29.8 points a game. Leading the NFL, Cowboys, mind you, are third right now with like 27. And that's with having a backup quarterback starting for them for five games. The Dallas Cowboys scored more points in the fourth quarter of one game than the Kansas City Chiefs have scored on average every single week per game. Sorry. I'm not impressed with the performance. I'm impressed that they were able to do that when they weren't playing their A game. That's what you should be taking away from that. The Dallas Cowboys have the two highest scoring games this season. And for all these, oh, we ain't played nobody. I'm sorry. We played the Cincinnati Bengals who I believe people are talking about as one of the hottest teams. Then there's the Minnesota Vikings, who, with the exception of after they got their ass kicked by the Cowboys, are talking about, you know, maybe Kirk Cousins is an MVP candidate and that this Minnesota Viking team could make some noise because I believe they only have two losses. And then you have the Giants in our division who, I believe they got four and a half losses. Two of them are to the Dallas Cowboys. And the commanders who are right now sitting in a playoff position. Cowboys will beat them too. Isn't that like five playoff teams currently? Am I wrong on that? Yeah. The shady throwing shade report. Maybe that's the name of what this needs to be. James Washington, it is your time, Mr. Unicorn, to shine. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate you. Peace.